Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. How will Justice Brett Kavanaugh, if he is confirmed, rule on things like religious liberty and contraception? Today we interview Colonel John Eidsmo of the Foundation for Moral Law. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we normally like to report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. But on today's show, we have a live interview via Skype with our returning legal expert and political analyst of the Supreme Court nominee. Brett Kavanaugh has been nominated by President Donald Trump to become the next justice on the United States Supreme Court, replacing the retiring Justice Anthony Kennedy. Brett Kavanaugh is 53 years old. He is a former law clerk for Justice Kennedy and also currently a DC Court of Appeals judge who is a conservative. But how would Brett Kavanaugh rule on things like religious liberty? Today we interview Colonel John Eidsmo, who is a lawyer with Judge Roy Moore, who founded the Foundation for Moral Law live via Skype from Alabama. Welcome Colonel Eidsmo to the program. Well, thank you chaps, it is great to be with you. Yes, sir. So I'm excited about two things. Number one, that President Trump has an opportunity to confirm a conservative justice to the Supreme Court, uh, but also that Judge Kavanaugh may or may not be in favor of religious liberty. And I wanna get your take on this. What's your initial reaction to his nomination? My initial reaction is very positive. And I say that for a couple of reasons. First of all, on the religious liberty issue that you asked about, I think he has built a solid record. First of all, he is of a very devout Roman Catholic upbringing. And although I myself am Lutheran, I certainly respect his commitment to that faith and to the religious liberty to share that faith. From other things that he has written and said, it certainly appears that, for example, in the Newdow versus Roberts case, he took the position that having an opening prayer and invocation of God in a public setting is not an establishment of religion. He has defended the archdiocese of Washington in cases involving the District of Columbia wanting to ban religious messages on public transport buses. He has in his private capacity, come and filed a brief defending the students of Santa Fe, Texas, not New Mexico, Santa Fe, Texas, in their desire to have prayer at their athletic events. I think he's built a very solid record in the subject of religious liberty, and I think he'll be a strong friend in that area. Well, I'm excited to hear that, and I know that you've read many of these cases in which he has opined. Um, I we'll talk about abortion in a few minutes, that's a different discussion. But there was a, a quote that I'm a little bit concerned about. The Federalists have quoted Judge Kavanaugh in the department, uh, excuse me, the case was Priest for Life versus Department of Health and Human Services. And this is where a group of Catholic priests did not want to provide uh, an abortion rider and their insurance policy to their own employees. You can't have Catholic priests offering abortion services or even abortion insurance to their own employees. And Judge Kavanaugh, I think, ruled properly that the priests don't have to do that. So that was a victory for religious liberty in that case. But there was some dicta in Judge Kavanaugh's opinion. He said, quote, the Hobby Lobby case strongly suggests that the government has a compelling interest in facilitating access to contraception for the employees of religious organizations. So first, let me get your opinion. Does the government have a compelling interest to force priests to provide contraception services or is that not what the Supreme Court ruled? Well, I think the very way we phrased that question, the very way the case is captioned there suggests how ridiculous that is. A compelling interest, 
to provide contraception for Catholic priests, and then in the Little Sisters case, for Catholic nuns? How ridiculous can we get? But in that particular language, what Judge Kavanaugh was doing was simply citing the language of the Supreme Court itself in, I believe that was the Little Sisters case, or maybe the Hobby Lobby case as well. And here is what I think a lot of our fellow conservatives, or I should say a few of our fellow conservatives who have been skeptical about Kavanaugh don't quite understand, is that it's a different situation when you're a district judge or an appellate judge than when you're on the Supreme Court itself. Basic rules of judicial ethics say that a judge is not to rule contrary to what a higher court has ruled. Now, this is different for a state Supreme Court as against the federal courts than it is for the federal courts who are directly under the Supreme Court. They're not to rule contrary to what the higher court has ruled unless they have a good faith, reasonable belief that there is at least a reasonable possibility that they might be able to persuade the higher court to change its mind. The reason for that rule, and it might seem strange to us, but the reason for that rule is that otherwise we would have the courts all clogged up with all sorts of litigation that really isn't going to go anywhere, but it would just tie up the courts. But for Judge Kavanaugh to say, for example, Roe versus Wade is the law of the land and I have to respect it and take that position as a appeals judge is not saying what he would do if he were actually on the Supreme Court and in a position to overrule Roe versus Wade. And in the language that he used there about a compelling interest, he was simply saying what the language of the Supreme Court decision had suggested, not that he's saying that that's his personal view. Well, that is uh, sort of splitting the baby and requires the wisdom of Solomon to say, uh, I may not hold this, but the Supreme Court has held this, Let's hope that he is going to uh, change his mind if he is later confirmed on the Supreme Court. We need to take a short break, but when we come back, I will ask Colonel Eismo about other religious liberty cases. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you ever wonder how to discern your own thoughts from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or angels or invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps and you've seen us talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. In fact, I wrote my PhD dissertation, How to See the Holy Spirit, Angels and Demons. But now we have an exciting 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set that you can get for your small group or your church. If you just visit PrayInJesusName.org and offer a suggested donation of $99 or call us toll free at 866-Obey-God. Get this 17 part video series and for a limited time only, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Get this important Bible study series for you and your church or call us at 866-Obey-God right now. I wanna make a special offer available to our television viewers and it's our new exclusive limited edition In God We Trust wall calendar. This is good through June of 2019, and we're running out, so you really need to pick up the phone. Why would you want an inspiring calendar? Well, listen, it's got quotes from many of our past presidents, starting with General George Washington, Abe Lincoln, Dwight David Eisenhower, President Ronald Reagan, even George W. Bush. Anytime they talked about their faith, we captured it and put their quotes on a calendar you can hang on your wall. Please pick up the phone today and call us at 866-Obey-God for your gift of just $15 plus $4 shipping. We will rush you this calendar and inspire you in the months ahead. Call us at 866-Obey-God or write to us right now at P.O. Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. Enclose your best donation and we'll ship you this calendar right away. Defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Colonel John Eidsmo, who is with the Foundation for Moral Law. Colonel, mention the, your foundation and how do you support Judge Roy Moore? The Foundation for Moral Law was established by Judge Roy Moore back in, I believe it was 2003, for the purpose of defending religious liberty cases. And 
one of the things that was the real impetus at that time was the Ten Commandments case. And the Ten Commandments are still a very important issue. Here in Alabama, of course, we have a constitutional amendment that will be on the ballot for voters in November that would authorize the public display of the Ten Commandments. So we're utilizing this as an opportunity to educate voters that the Ten Commandments truly are the moral foundation of law. Sure, they're a religious document as well, but they're also a moral code, and a civil code, and even a criminal code. And we get involved in such cases, also cases involving the rights of people to pray in public, other matters similar to the things I've just discussed with Judge Kavanaugh. You know, I'd like to mention one thing else about Judge Kavanaugh. When you look to his record there, Yale Law School, of course, and Yale undergraduate as well, teaching at the Harvard Law School, teaching at the Yale Law School, these some 12, 13 years now of serving as an appellate judge on the most prestigious appellate court in the nation, the D.C. Circuit, I think it's important that we have not only a judge that is going to vote conservative, and I believe he will. I think he'll be more conservative than Kennedy by far, more conservative than Roberts, maybe not quite as conservative as Scalia or Thomas, probably very much in the mold of Gorsuch or Alito. And But here's, I think, something we need to remember is that a judge's importance is not just in being there as a solid vote but also for the wisdom of the opinions that he writes. And I'm thinking back to the 1930s when we had several very conservative justices on the court, their votes were good, but what real lasting contributions did they make in terms of the opinions that they wrote? We really can't remember any. And in contrast to that, to a justice like Rehnquist or Scalia and the brilliant opinions that they have written that have been persuasive and will shape courts for generations to come. Some say that Justice or Judge Kavanaugh has said that Rehnquist was his first hero. And well, I have a I question about a... that. I know um, Justice Rehnquist was in the minority in 1973 when Roe versus Wade was opined. And Justice Rehnquist was pro-life and he wrote a dissent against Roe versus Wade that was cited by Kavanaugh in one of his early academic papers. And, and Kavanaugh models himself after Rehnquist and he agrees with you. He says that some of these dissenting opinions from decades ago, like by Justice Rehnquist, later became the position of the majority, even though they lost at the time, they later became uh, set precedent for future cases, which which became the majority. Do you think that could happen? And could Roe versus Wade actually be overturned if Kavanaugh is confirmed? I think there is a very good chance that it would be overturned, yes. I think he would vote. I think Roberts will also do so. And with Alito and the others, I think that will give us a majority to overrule Roe versus Wade. I can't say for sure, but I think so. And but one thing we need to remember too, talk about <clears throat> Justice Rehnquist being <clears throat> his, mo- his, <clears throat> his hero. There is a difference between the <clears throat> original intent view of Justice Rehnquist versus that of Justice Scalia. Rehnquist looked to original intent by looking to the history of the times. And if you read Rehnquist's opinions, they will go through great lengths to cite the history of the time of the founding and how from that history it is clear that the founding fathers did not want this wall of separation in the way it is sometimes described today. Whereas Scalia will say, don't give me all that history, all history and all quotes can be sanitized and distorted. Just give me the plain words of the constitution and I'll tell you what they mean. Well, personally, I like Justice Rehnquist's approach and. That seems to be the approach that Justice Kavanaugh likes to follow. And I think he'll not only be a solid conservative vote, I think he's gonna be a great justice whose opinions will be quoted for a long time to come. And we do need to remember this too, that every judge on that court is not just a vote, but is an individual. They think for themselves. And I don't think we'd want it any other way. Well, you could be right. 
I know a lot of conservatives before President Trump announced his selection, were hoping that Amy Coney Barrett would be selected because she is not only Roman Catholic, a very conservative professor from Notre Dame, but also has very clearly opined in some of her academic writings that Supreme Court precedent is not always set in stone, that the stare decisis, as they call it, the Latin for uh, precedent by a Supreme Let Court is not down. always, yep. uh, can, it, it could be overturned and she was more bold. So she had the support of groups like the American Family Association who is now gently opposing Judge Kavanaugh. Also Senator Rand Paul is against Judge Kavanaugh. Uh, there are other conservative groups. He is not as conservative as Barrett, but you think he'll be close enough. Well, as far as saying that Roe versus Wade is the law of the land, during her confirmation hearings for the appellate court, she too said repeatedly that Roe versus Wade is the law of the land, reflecting the fact that as an appellate judge, she doesn't have the right to overturn it. Now, there's a difference between saying, as an appellate judge, I have the right to defy a Supreme Court decision, versus saying, as a Supreme Court justice, I have the right to vote to overrule it. Those are two different things, and I think that she would vote to overrule Roe versus Wade as well. But here's one thing I think you need to remember, that she has been a law professor at Notre Dame for a long time. She has extensive experience there. She is bright, no doubt about it, but her experience as a judge is limited to one year on the Court of Appeals. That's the only judicial experience she has. And having been senior staff attorney for the Alabama Supreme Court, as well as a law professor, I can tell you that writing as a law professor is very different from writing as a judge. And I think Amy Barrett might be a very fine choice somewhere down the line, but I think Kavanaugh is much more ready for it now. Let's take a short break. When we come back, I'll ask Colonel Eismo about the odds of Kavanaugh being confirmed when there's only 51 Republican senators. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. You know, people ask me, chaps, we're watching on this network. We've already set our DVR to record your shows, but our friends don't have this network or maybe they can't watch at this time. Did you know we are on demand on 10 different platforms? You can tell your friends to find this show, PIJN News, on their Roku box or their Amazon Fire box. Just look under the religion or news categories. Or maybe you have a smartphone or your friends or grandchildren can find us on Android TV, Google TV, Smart TV, or iTunes. Of course, we're always on the internet. Look for us on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, or better yet, subscribe to our daily email alerts at PrayInJesusName.org. It's important that you share all of these available platforms with your friends so we can mobilize all of the body of Christ to pray the news and change the world. Would you join us? Visit PrayInJesusName.org to learn more empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Colonel John Eidsmo. Sir, would you please handicap for us the upcoming Senate Judiciary hearings? Will Kavanaugh be forwarded out of committee and ultimately will he get an up or down vote and 51, maybe even 50 plus one, uh, you, conservative senators to vote yes to put him on the bench? I believe he will. Now, first of all, when you say it's 51 Republican senators, of course, 
Senator McCain is very ill with brain cancer right now, and whether he will be able to cast a vote, that may be open to some question. If he can't, it's down to 50. But the thing we need to remember, too, is that while there are a couple of senators like Susan Collins and Murkowski of Alaska who have been in favor of Roe versus Wade, and they've expressed some reservations about whether to support Judge Kavanaugh, and also Rand Paul has, although I think he'll come around. I might point out that probably the two solidest conservatives in the Senate right now, Senator Mike Lee of Utah and Senator Ted Cruz of Texas, they are both solidly in support of Judge Kavanaugh. But I think we need to remember also that there are a number of Democrats who are not conservative, really, in my opinion, but they don't dare be as liberal as they want to be because they're in conservative states. We think of the senator from Nevada, for example. We think of Senator Tester from Montana, Senator Heitkamp from, from North, North Dakota, Dakota, Senator yep. Manchin from West Virginia, the senator from Missouri, the senator from Indiana. We have several of these who are facing re-election right now in red states that went strongly for Trump, and they're really on the line. If they vote against confirming Kavanaugh this fall, that is really going to jeopardize their chances of re-election. And so, well, there might be a few Republican defections. I think there may well be some Democrats who come over as well. Well, that's a good point. The Senate Minority Leader, Chuck Schumer of New York, has said that he's going to oppose Kavanaugh with all of his might uh, and do everything in his power to stop his confirmation. Uh, but the Senate has recently gotten rid of the cloture vote. They've exercised the nuclear option for even Supreme Court justices to be confirmed with a simple majority instead of a 60 seat majority as had been required in the past to get beyond a filibuster. Since they cannot and will not allow a filibuster of Judge Kavanaugh, and it only requires 50 votes, and then you assume Vice President Mike Pence would break a tie if there was a tie, but could some of these Democrat senators you mentioned, Claire McCaskill of Missouri, uh, Joe Manchin of West Virginia, Joe Donnelly of Indiana, Heidi Heitkamp of North Dakota, could they be locked down by Chuck Schumer, or, or will he give them a free hand to vote the way their constituents want? I'm sure you'll find the left will put as much pressure as they can. The fact is, while some of the moderate Democrats may vote to confirm Kavanaugh, as far as Kavanaugh being desirable, well, there's the old saying that if you wanna know who to be for, find out who the devil is against. And the fact that the left, not all the Democrats, but the left, is just solid and vehemently and almost irrationally opposed to Kavanaugh right now, that in itself ought to tell you something. But there will probably be a great deal of pressure, but then Schumer himself is gonna be in some dilemma on this too. For one thing, he doesn't wanna lose his Republican or his Democrat strength in the Senate. And whereas he would like to block the nomination and confirmation of Kavanaugh, at the same time, he doesn't want to cause the loss of several Democrat senators that would make him even more of a minority than he is now. And so he'll be in a dilemma on that. But, and they may be in a position whether they are going to defy the Democratic establishment and their liberal constituents in order to get reelected. And sometimes that doesn't work either. Sometimes you cut off your base and they don't support you. So. Schumer is in a dilemma. Those so-called moderate Democrats from conservative states are in a dilemma. And I'm kind of enjoying it. <laughs> They're between a rock and a hard spot. If they vote to confirm Kavanaugh, maybe they win some Republican votes, but I think they lose more Democrat votes in their own states. Uh, whereas if they vote against Kavanaugh, they will not return to the US Senate. And maybe President Trump picks up up to 55 U.S. Senate seats in the next term, and then he would have enough to confirm somebody like Justice Amy Barrett. So the, the Democrats ought to be happy with Kavanaugh if they can get him, because he's more moderated. I think if they lose the Senate in, in even stronger terms, they'll end up with somebody like Barrett instead of Kavanaugh. 
Well, again, I'm not at all sure that Kavanaugh is more moderate than, than Barrett. Yes, there are a couple of suggestions that he might be, but again, given his judicial experience, I think his chances of confirmation are going to be greater. And I think he'll have the stature on the court for that he'll probably carry more weight. You know, here's one thing about Rehnquist. Rehnquist had an ability to work with others, and as a result, he was many times able to get Kennedy over to his side and craft a 5-4 majority in many key cases. Scalia tended to be more the dissenter on the right, and he may be most famous for some of his golden dissenting opinions. Although, I have to say about Scalia, too, he just had a magnificent personality, and he was willing to reach out and work with others. I'm going to tell you something that will really surprise you. You know what Justice Scalia and his wife had a tradition of doing every, every New Year's Eve? No. They would go out every New Year's Eve with Justice Ginsburg and her husband. Can you imagine that? Well, I know politics make strange bedfellows, but I'm glad to see that they got along. We're out of time, they, Colonel, they, but please mention your website and how can people support the Foundation for Moral Law? We can certainly use donations. The Foundation for Moral Law website is morallaw.org. Morallaw, the two L's, dot org. I agree, morallaw.org. Now, our website is PrayInJesusName.org. We need your returning, recurring donations. Please click Recurring Donate when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. We're out of time, but if you need prayer today, pick up the phone and call us at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, this book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. This book teaches 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional that will change your life and give you power. It comes with 15 inspiring true stories of political victory. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon, and you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website schoolofliberty.org. That's schoolofliberty.org. It's time to take back your country. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. 